If someone were to ask you to define your community, to describe the place you call home and explain its flavor and character, you might mention the local environment and its landscape, different neighborhoods and their styles of architecture, and popular attractions that provide identity and color. You want to hear the whole yes. story? Of course, it was a good story then, it's a good story now. <laughs> For cultural anthropologist James Griffith, these attributes also provide a sense of place. But what best defines a community or region for him are its people, their stories, and their traditions. Griffith is a modern-day folklorist. And that was all we needed. Oh, wow. I didn't always know what to call it, but I'm interested in the stuff that, that's got depth and roots and and genealogy and history, creativity, beauty, all those kinds of things. This is what's always interested me. La Llorona, the weeping woman, could conceivably be in this area. Tucson was founded by guys like this, Soldados de Cuera, leather jacket soldiers. This particular Southern Arizona tradition is also an ancient Mexican tradition. James Griffith, PhD, is much better known as Big Jim Griffith. Mm. He is six and feet seven inches tall and a compelling figure in the world of Sonoran desert I'm culture. It is more than an interest, actually. It is a passion that spans several decades. And there are dozens of stories hot off the comal. For more than 20 years, Big Jim Griffith hosted Southern Arizona Traditions on KUAT's Arizona Illustrated, addressing topics such as history, food, and people's narratives. Along the way, he acknowledged and saluted a segment of the population that has been here for centuries, yet was frequently in the background. Fully half of the people who came up and talked to me about how they liked the segments did so in Spanish. A lot of working class Mexicanos watched KUAT. So it struck me that one thing I was doing as a favor for that population is showing public respect, enjoyment, and appreciation for regional culture and, in this particular case, Mexican culture. Well, for me, he's always been inspiration in the way that he, that he treats people. You know, I like the way he treats people. I like the way he gets along with people. And I think he's a really good ambassador for, uh, for, the, for Tucson and the Sonora Desert in general. I've seen experiences with everyday people who may not have otherwise been validated for the work that they do. And I think validation is something that's really incredibly important. And that has always impressed me about him is the authenticity of his relationship with the people that he studied and served and documented. Um, and they love him for that authenticity. They know that it comes from the heart. When you're talking about Southern Arizona traditions, be sure to include the Itoiki. I think Jim has been for the man in the street, for the regular people of Tucson, someone who has interpreted all of our customs to us. We're at one of Tucson's most interesting places, as far as I'm concerned. It's right at the corner In addition to the Maine, segments on television, Big Jim has also attended thousands of festivals, lectures, and other events, and he has written countless articles and books. In 1974, he co-founded Tucson Meet Yourself. The annual gathering of more than 100,000 people is a cause for intercultural celebration in a world that is often depicted as divided and violent. It's the ugly quite often that makes the news and gets the articles and um, what sells. Beauty is something that really needs to be celebrated. We're pretty good at ugly, but we're also pretty good at beauty. And Griffith's work has left a lasting impression in the community, from strangers and friends to peers and other professionals he inspires. Jim is a visionary and a groundbreaker in ways that were so subtle, so uh, simple, so intrinsic to the aesthetics and practices of everyday life that many people, I think, miss the radical edge that his propositions have. 
what you have in Jim is a rare combination of uh, ethnographers or anthropologists' keen eye for details mm -hmm. and an abiding mm -hmm. love of the people with whom he lives yes, and sir. curiosity yes, about sir. people with whom he doesn't live. He's a, a gifted, gifted guy, um, brilliant, intellectual, um, um, self-effacing about that, and he won't own up to that, but uh, he's a legend and he's iconic. And he's also fun. I think at one point in time in a story he told me while we were in Mexico together was that to do really good, you, you need to learn skills to be a folklorist, but to really meet people you have to be willing to belly up to the bar. It's been a memorable trajectory for a kid who was born in Santa Barbara, California and grew up in Pasadena. After graduating from high school, Big Jim moved to Tucson in 1955 to study archaeology at the University of Arizona. However, he discovered an affinity for cultures and the border region, and the rest, as they say, is history. When he moved back to California for a few years to teach, Jim met Loma in 1961, and they were married two years later. Throughout the year, she has been a supportive and committed partner, even though she's usually off to the side somewhere while Jim is dealing with the functions or crowds. Well, I introduce her either as my keeper, my parole officer, or my probation officer. Uh, I will say that she indeed is a keeper. And I will say that just about everything that I've been able to do, she's had a serious hand in. And that teamwork has touched countless lives across international boundaries, socioeconomic backgrounds, and ethnicities. Griffith says his recipe is simple, appreciation, enjoyment, and respect for others. I love getting people together, and I love talking about our regional culture. There was an old cowboy who lived in Clay Springs who once said, well, if there are any other place I'd rather be, I would have gone there. And I feel that way about Tucson. This is an exciting place to be, and the more I find out about it, the more exciting it gets.